Hi, welcome to Biology Classes with Lakshmi Chandra. In today's session, uh, we'll discuss about cloning vectors. As you all know regarding what is a vector now when I say in biotechnology, and also we know about cloning. When I say this term cloning, suddenly the word, uh, the animal dolly comes to our mind, isn't it? The first clone by Ian Wilmot. So here also cloning vectors, it doesn't mean we are going to make copies of the vectors. Actually, we want the copies of our gene of interest here. As I've told you last day, what a gene of interest is taking an example of that. So uh, in the if you want to have a clear understanding about those topics, please refer the previous videos uh, regarding biotechnology, subscribe the channel. You will get the videos in the playlist and you can just click on as you want one after the other and have a recap. So moving to our topic today regarding cloning vectors. Let's, let me just tell you what a cloning vector is first. Here, as you know, a small vector is carrying our gene of interest. And this vector carries it into a bacterial cell or say any other cell. And within that bacterial cell, this vector will replicate. And as this vector replicates, our gene of interest will also replicate. Okay, like in a photostat machine, we are keeping a paper to be photocopied and the machine is giving you the number of copies that you need. So imagine if that photostat machine is going to give you 100 copies within say 5 minutes and you have another photostat machine which is giving you 100 copies in 1 hour. Which one will you prefer? The first one, isn't it? Which is going to give you 100 copies within 5 minutes. So there we can say the copy number is more. That means if you stipulate within a stipulated time, the number of copies that you're going to get is more in the first machine than in the second machine. Same thing we need for our, as a feature of our cloning vector also. We need a vector which is going to give you a more number of gene of interest within a short period of time. So that word is the first thing that you must keep it in mind. Copy number. That is number of copies or number of times a vector can multiply within a cell. So that is copy number, that is very much important. So that is the first feature of any cloning vector. Okay, so we are moving on to the features of cloning vector one by one. First feature, as I've told you, it we should have a high copy number. Features required to facilitate cloning in a vector. This point, this part is very important for your board exam. Often this is asked for three marks questions and all. Okay. So features. First important feature that, that you should keep it in mind is, yes, we are going to give get a clone, isn't it? So we have to have a high copy number. So which feature in the cloning vector is supporting for that? It is its origin of a replication. For any vector to replicate, it should have its own region where that replication is beginning or it is originating. Because these vectors, they replicate without the help of the bacterial cell or any cell into which you are going to put it. Okay, the bacterial cell is having its own chromosome. That chromosome is guiding everything what should happen inside a bacterial cell. But this particular cloning vector is not under the control of that chromosome. It is having its own origin of replication. So it decides when it should replicate. So the frequency in which it replicates, if it is very high, it will be give you a more and more number of gene of interest. So that is decided by its origin of replication. So the first feature required to facilitate cloning in a vector is that this vector should have a origin of replication. And how should that origin of replication be? The origin of replication should support high copy number. So I think that is registered in your mind. First most important feature. So if you look at this particular point, 
I can just tell you two examples of cloning vectors which is mentioned in your textbook. First one is plasmid, another one is bacteriophages. Plasmids and bacteriophages. Now plasmids often this definition is asked what is a plasmid? It's very important for you to understand. Sometimes they will ask you uh, just list the features of a plasmid. So plasmid is extra chromosomal that means it is outside the chromosome it is autonomously replicating that is self replicating without the help of that chromosome it is often double stranded and how it looks it looks circular in nature extra chromosomal autonomously replicating double stranded circular dna is a plasmid and this plasmid, I have often told you in the previous video also, this plasmid is always imparts an additional property for the bacterial cell. Regarding those additional properties, we had already discussed, so I am not going into that. So, origin of replication, see, autonomously, the plasmid is able to replicate. Same thing is bacteriophages. Bacteriophages are viruses that attack bacteria. And often we choose here a kind of viruses called as retroviruses. Often we choose here retroviruses. Retroviruses, they have their genetic material as RNA and they do reverse transcription to produce DNA. They do here reverse transcription. That's why reverse transcription, that is why it is termed as retroviruses. They do reverse transcription. Portion regarding this was explained in this transcription video earlier, uh, previously had already discussed regarding this. So retroviruses and plasmids, they are often used and there are different kinds of plasmids about which we will be learning in the coming sessions. Okay. So here we are discussing about the features of cloning vector. First and most important feature, it should have an origin of replication and how should it be? The origin of replication should support high copy number. Only then we will get copies of our gene of interest. The second one, cloning vectors should have a selectable marker. I can complete this as a selectable marker gene. Cloning vector should have a selectable marker gene. Now, what is that? See, I'll just tell you an example and explain it. Imagine I have taken a culture plate. Okay, culture plate means artificial medium into which I'm going to grow bacterial cells. Okay, so this is a culture plate and here I am growing plenty of bacterial cells, numerous. You know bacterial cells, they exist as colonies, not like this. Small, small dots they exist as, actually they exist as small, small dots. Each dot will have thousands of bacterial cells, that's how they actually exist. But for you to understand, I am just drawing it here like this. Okay, there are many bacterial cells which I am growing here. And into this bacterial cell, I am putting my uh, vectors. This is my vector, okay, this red color. This is my vector with gene of interest. There are so many vectors here with gene of interest. Now, some of these bacterial cells will take up the gene of interest. Some of them will not take up the gene of interest, okay. For example, let me just draw here, this bacterial cell has taken, this is another one which is get, got into, this is the third one entered, okay, here into this the fourth one has entered. So here among these bacterial cells, only one, two, three, four, only in four bacterial cells, my gene of interest or my vector has entered. So rest of the experiments or what I am going to do is only with these four bacterial cells. I don't want the other ones. Okay. So I have here bacterial cell. Okay. Into which 
my vector has entered with my gene of interest and there is another set of bacterial cell into which my vector with gene of interest is not present. So what I call this as, this I can call this as a transformed cell. In the last video I told you regarding these terms, transformed, transgenic, recombinant, the difference between these three terms I have explained in the previous video. Okay, so this is a transformed cell now because it is having a gene of interest. What can I call this cell? This is a non-transformed cell. This is a non-transformed cell. This is transformed cell. So in this culture plate, I am having transformed and non-transformed cells. Which one do I need? I need transformed cells. I need transformed cells I, and I want it to grow further. But what I want to have with this non-transformed ones, I have to identify the non-transformed ones. Why I am going to identify it? So that I can eliminate it. I can remove it. So after putting the recombinant plasmid or vector into this culture plate, after some time, now my next step is to select the transformed cells from the non-transformed ones. For that, I need this selectable marker. It is to identify and eliminate the non-transformants, means non-transformed cells, from the transformed ones. So that I can promote the growth of transformed cells. For that, I need a selectable marker. And I'll explain to you regarding what is the selectable marker and how it is going to help it out. Now we are just listing the features. Okay. Next is what I need is a cloning site. Next feature what I need in my vector is a cloning site. So let me explain to you that also. Imagine this is a vector, a plasmid. Plasmid is double stranded circular DNA. Okay. Now, this plasmid is having a region here, a cloning site here, which can be recognized by the enzyme ECO R1. This site can be recognized by ECO R1. That means this is the cloning site for ECO R1. That means with the ECO R1 enzyme, I can make a cut here and I can insert my gene of interest here. That is the meaning of cloning site. Cloning site is, is given name according to the restriction enzyme which can come and cut. Okay. Now here, again I am having in this plasmid another site here for again for ECO R1. Again a third site here I am having for ECO R1. Okay, so I am having a vector here which is having three areas which can be recognized by ECO R1. And if I put the enzyme ECO R1 into this particular vector, what will happen to that? This vector will may come and make a cut here. Okay, this part is removed. Again, it is examining. Okay, it has found its recognition site here. Again, it will make a cut here. Again, when it examines, it makes another cut here. So what had actually happened? My vector is now cut into one, two, three pieces. My vector is now cut into three pieces. What is the use of that? I don't want such a vector, which is cut into pieces. Okay, what is my aim? I want a vector. A vector which is which is having a site which is recognized by eco r1 okay so that this site is cut and then I am now able to insert my gene of interest here instead of this if this vector is having more than one site for one enzyme 
then my vector is going to be cut into several pieces which will be of no use to me instead i need a vector which can be recognized by a restriction enzyme only at one site one restriction enzyme is coming and recognizing it only at one site okay so then i am fine with this but again i am not happy i want this vector to be recognized by another enzyme also say this vector should be recognized by another restriction enzyme bam h1 again it should be recognized by another enzyme hint 3 these are all restriction enzymes i had already uh, put a video regarding how to name restriction enzymes it is it will be better if you go through that so that you can identify how these names are are coming okay so here i have taken a vector which is recognized by restriction enzyme eco r1 so that that vector when i put that, that enzyme when i put here it will make a come and cut here so that i can insert my gene of interest again i am putting another enzyme bam h1 it is coming and making a cut over here so here i can insert another gene of interest okay i'm putting a design like this another gene of interest and again hint 3 is coming and cutting here so here i am going to make another gene of interest so in one vector i am able to add more than one gene of interest what made me do this because this vector can be recognized by more than one restriction enzyme and but what is the what what is that if uh, but statement there one enzyme is going to recognize only one area if it is going to recognize more than one area it is of no use so one enzyme one area or several enzymes but it should recognize only one area of its own so how to put it in that sentence i can just say cloning sites should have single recognition site for several restriction enzymes there can be several restriction enzymes but each enzyme should have only single recognition site so these are the features of cloning vector origin of replication with high copy number it should have a selectable marker gene it should have a cloning site and how it should have is already explained in the next video i'll elaborate on selectable marker genes thank you for now